Hello students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. Today we will move to module 10, where we look into one of the most interesting aspects throughout this course, which is creativity. Creativity, psychological capital and a little bit about mindfulness. So, uh, we start with today's lecture on understanding creativity. I am Dr. Ibrahim Sir Isaac. I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So, today's uh, theme would be team composition, member behaviors, collective affective states and task experience impacts creativity. So, when we are trying to understand creativity, we have to first acknowledge the fact that creativity does not depend on one single factor. Creativity is an outcome of a lot of factors and we are making an attempt to understand those factors. So, on that note, we will start with uh, what we have today uh, in terms of our discussion. What is creativity? Take a moment and think what is creativity. In 1953, the Journal of Psychology, the article by an American psychologist named Morris Tain defined creative work as a novel work that is accepted as tenable or useful or satisfying by a group in some point in time. So, it is not the regular solution or the regular idea. It is an idea that has come up with a sort of an intuition, a sort of a, a, a bit of experience into it, a lot of other factors which has triggered that person to br bring out that idea or elicit that idea. Based on that idea, if, the, if some application could be made out of it, it, whether it could be useful in the organization for that particular activity or if that idea is going a lot ahead and giving you a different product altogether, a different scheme of service altogether, then it is nothing but creativity. So, when we look into creativity, the first understanding that should come our way is that it is basically an idea that needs to be useful, tenable for the organization. See, you can generate n number of ideas. You have the potential to give a lot of solutions to a lot of problems. You have capability to uh, maybe uh, design uh, altogether a different, uh, let us say, product or service. That said, if that is not useful for your organization, if that is not tenable or uh, let us say making use of that is virtually impossible, then it does not amount to creativity. Creativity should have some purpose. You can obviously tag yourself as creativity, but there is some result orientation that you have to associate. That is the basic understanding you should have with respect to creativity because we are living in a result oriented, purpose driven world. So, let us look into uh, the creativity definition in detail because we have used a term novel. Right? So, when we are using that, let us understand why we have used it and what is the ramifications of using that. So, when we look into the previous definition particularly as I have already mentioned, there is a usage of novel. The creative product did not exist previously. That is the premise with which we are starting the whole discussion in precisely the same form. So, there was the, if there was a product that was there. In some other form, like rudimentary product or let us say a version 1 of that particular product, we can bring in a different product. Case in point could be any car models. We see we are living in a world of facelifts. We are living in a world of new innovative designs that are being improvised on the previous ones. If the creative product did not exist, that is the first clause previously, in precisely the same form, then we can say that that is novel. It can be also understood when it is said that it arises from a reintegration of already existing materials or knowledge. Please note that these are already existing. There is nothing new that is coming in, but there is increased reintegration of these materials or knowledge, but when it is completed, it contains 
elements that are new. So essentially, it is not the old wine in the new bottle. Rather, it is like you may have the usage of or you may use some existing materials or knowledge, no doubt about it. But what you are essentially bringing out as a product is something which is brand new. This is the understanding when you are using the word novel in the definition. It can be also understood by the fact that you are actually making it a case of the creativity. So let's look into creativity. What does it involve? So creativity involves the skill, involves the skill rather than the gift of bringing about something new and valuable. So when you are looking into uh, certainly creativity, newness is something which is very critical. So in the, in the previous discussion, I have already mentioned that you may use some of the existing resources, some of the old resources, if I can use the word there. But the, essentially the product that is coming out or the service that is coming out or whatever is the outcome that is coming out, that should have a tag of newness associated with that. That's why I took some time in explaining the importance of being novel. So newness is described as originality, statistical infrequence, a change from tradition. You're not looking into something which is sacrosanct and it is there as a tradition. We are completely looking at something which is new, which is which is modern, which is something which can be, you know, uh, which has never been observed previously. Renovated, rejuvenated or regenerated past ideas and the unique personal expression. Now, this is wonderful when you look into or this should be understood uh, when you are actually looking into examples of, let's say, design in automotive industry. When you are looking into the, the, the competition, the fight that's going on in the automotive industry, you'll see that most of the Indian consumers now, they look into the customers, they go in for SUV type of model. So when you are looking into that a particular um, field or that particular area, you'll see that lot of players have brought in a lot of uh, different models and different variants of those models. Now, when you are looking into those models, let's take an example in this case. We have, let's say, the uh, players like Hyundai, Kia, um, Honda, right, even uh, uh, the Suzuki, Toyota, everybody is coming and playing in that particular segment because that is the, the prime segment which the Indian customers like. They have understood that. So when you are looking into an established setup, it's, it's difficult to sell your products because there are a lot of options. You don't have anything close to a monopoly. You have to work hard. Your marketing strategy should be on dot, it should be uh, too precise and it should not be that the case that you are just selling, uh, you know, the same wine in a new bottle. That should not be the case. So this is where you see a lot of creativity is happening. Sometimes they change with respect to uh, the, the, the powertrain. Sometimes they change with respect to the transmission. Sometimes a minor design change can lead that model all the way along. Sometimes the features that are provided, sometimes aggressive pricing. So all these aspects have to be understood that how people or how companies are trying to capture or trying to make the market share uh, increased or having a higher uh, you know, say in their market. So this is what the creativity can be seen, observed directly in the Indian automotive industry. So when we look into creativity in particular understanding, it's always better and that's the theme of our course even. We fall back to empirical research. We have to understand what research says about workplace creativity. Now, based on sound empirical research, we can obviously say that creativity is widely seen as a driver of innovation, undoubtedly growth and societal development. So these are the three aspects which creativity is totally connected to or intertwined with. Creativity is seen as vital for organizations to thrive in constantly changing environments. Now, this is, this is something which is making the whole 
definition or understanding of creativity all the more critical because we are living in a world which is constantly changing the environment is constantly changing and coping with unforeseen challenges developing new capabilities have to be there so that we adjust we adapt to the constantly changing environment so creativity and innovation when we look into that these are two distinct words we should understand that many a time we tend to use or we see that the literature or specifically the media uses creativity and innovation in a very very uh, interchangeable manner which is categorically wrong they are distinct concepts but they reserve both of them reserve a central role for creativity in providing the core ideas that may ultimately lead to innovation so creativity should be understood as a precursor as an antecedent to the uh, to what we know as innovation and help overcome the challenges arising during the implementation of the entire process so this is what should be the primary understanding of creativity and this should also be the primary understanding of what innovation is specifically so accordingly research specifically on workplace creativity may offer valuable insights into how how to promote workplace creativity thus increasing the chance of achieving innovative outcomes so what we understand basically is that creativity refers to the ability to come up with original ideas while innovation is all about implementation innovation is all about implementing those ideas to create value it can also involve improving something that already exists now that improvisation again i am repeating it should not be an old product should not be an existing product or should not be an existing version it should be a facelift it should be a new version it should be an upgrade over the previous essentially it should be a new product it should be a new entity or it should be a new service whatever you are on under consideration so this is what the research on workplace creativity is if you look into the field of organizational behavior management specifically creativity is used to define an outcome basically you see that creativity is a is an idea generation process this is what the understanding we are having till now when you are specifically looking to the role of creativity in obm you will understand that it is more of an outcome it is understood or at least deciphered more as an outcome that is products it could be services it could be business models even work methods or management processes that are novel and useful so this is the basic shift in understanding of what creativity is when it comes to its understanding in the discipline of ob or obm specifically so this emphasis on creativity as an outcome rather than just as an idea generation process instead of the mental process through which we 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 generate or create ideas as i mentioned ultimately emerges or allows creativity creativity to be quantified with relative ease and consensus so why we do it why we take creativity or why we try to assume creativity as a precursor as more of an outcome in a process it's mainly because we need to measure it so when we are looking into a uh, 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 science basically if you recall my earliest of lecture 1 lecture 2 in module 1 i've i've emphasized on the importance and relevance of scientific temper in in actually defining obm so more than intuition we are actually following a systematic method when it comes to the research in ob and hr specifically for that we need to understand the concept and if we need to understand the concept there is no better way than to understand how to measure it 
for measuring it or to increase the ease to measure that, we generally come out with something which is more of a, an assumption that creativity happens to be an outcome. So this is the convenience which we are making in, in actually understanding creativity in the field of OBM, in the realm of OBM. So when you look into workplace creativity specifically, creativity may be the outcome of individuals or teams regardless of their functional areas and positions in the organizational hierarchy. So it does not restrict you if you are down the hierarchy, if you are not in a part of a decision making body, it will not prevent you from being creative. This is the fundamental understanding. This is the passion that should drive you. If you are creative, if there is creative potentiality is resting within you, you cannot blame the organizational hierarchy, you cannot blame the position you are in. Moreover, you cannot blame any other extrinsic or extraneous variables that those variables are going to affect the creativity. No rather than it is more of individual intrinsic motivation, intrinsic factors, internal factors that drive creativity which is exclusive of the organizational hierarchy. When you are looking into creativity, it is nothing but the first and the crucial stage of innovation. But predictors of ideas and implementation are likely to differ. There is no doubt about it. But we should understand and acknowledge the fact that creativity happens to the first happens to be the first and the crucial stage of innovation. Now, is creativity an individual characteristic only? This is where we need to have a detailed understanding. Is creativity an individual characteristic only? When we look into organization specific dynamics, when we look into people who are actually interacting in organization, interpersonal relationships or maybe the, the team formation, the cohesion within the organization, all these factors have a significant impact on what is known as creativity. So let's understand, is creativity an individual characteristic only? Whether person X and person Y, both individuals in the same organization, same organizational setup, maybe in the same positions of hierarchy, having the same workers, co-workers, being in the same team, but still their performance in terms of creativity or the creativity potential varies and they are able to deliver it in a different way, whereby maybe Y is excelling in his or her performance than X possibly it could be so essentially let's understand whether it is an actual individual characteristic only when we look into the ongoing debates to answer this particular question creativity at workplace studies are broadly separated on the basis of whether they focus on the actor or specifically the individual or the context as the major driving force of creativity. So this is the basic understanding with which we go ahead. When we are looking into, when we are actually observing creativity as an individual outcome, let's look into an actor-centered accounts of workplace creativity. Effects of individuals' personality characteristics on creativity is emphasized let's say it could be based on your proactive personality, creative self-efficacy, individual differentiation, individual differentiation from teammates in terms of maybe thinking or feeling, positive affect or even optimism and hope. So these are certain factors which clearly tell you the story that there are certain individual personality, personality characteristics that have an impact on the creative potential of an individual. But contradicting studies have also found that apart from openness, if we are actually looking into the big five aspect, apart from openness to experience, none of the big five personality factors directly affect creativity. So this is a bit of a, a confusion that there are a majority of studies which actually underscore the relevance of individual's personality. But let's understand this rather than creating a confusion, let's understand this in this way. Personality characteristics, there are some aspects, some elements 
like creative self-efficacy, some elements like positive effect, optimism, hope, these are some of the uh, not essentially the traits, these are not essentially the personality elements, rather than these are some of the factors that are observed within the personality. Those factors have a clear affinity or connect or maybe an influence over the creative potential of an individual. That said, when we are looking into, when we are trying to actually make, uh, you know, assume or give uh, correlations with respect to the different traits of personality, we should understand that apart from openness along the entire big five traits, there is no other trait which actually correlates to the creative potential, essentially making it an, an individual characteristics. So basically when we look into context-centered accounts of workplace creativity, employee creativity varies as a function of the characteristics of the task at work. So task characteristic gets a, a mention here. Employee creativity to a certain extent depends on, let's look into a mundane, let's say a day-to-day -day task. There is no need for any creativity. There is no need to improvise or uh, anything on that. There is no actual need to, you know, uh, bring something out of an existing task. So it happens in such a way that task characteristics, how, how complex they are, how uncertain they are, that becomes a a determining factor when it comes to the employee creativity. When we look into job control and routinization, both are positively related to self-reported creativity. And we can also find a curvilinear relationship between time pressure and creativity. So with those employees working under, we have to be very clear with this understanding from the study, moderate degrees of time pressure. I will share the references in the last slide. The study is not looking into very high time pressure, rather moderate degrees of time pressure reports the highest levels of creativity. So, actors, social environment promotes creativity, that is also a clear understanding we have. So, when we are looking into creativity, whether to settle the debate that it is individualistic or it is more of a context driven, let us take this point a little bit further. When we are looking into individualistic aspect, I have already mentioned that there are certain personality factors that may have or we the studies might have, the researchers might have observed some, some connect with those factors. That said, there is actually no correlation between traits of personality and creativity as such except openness. But when we look into the context specifically, we see that the social element, the task characteristics, the time pressure, all these are relevant factors. So there is a significant impact of the context on the creative potential of an individual. So please, I just want you to remind of my, my introductory video in which I had categorically said that any OB course should actually delve into the context also because context gives more clarity to the behavior under consideration. So this is what we are doing now. This is where we see that there, there can be a different understanding when context is at play. So when you are looking into uh, creativity, we have to essentially understand it in this way that it is not an individual characteristic per se, but there are some effects or some impacts of certain, certain social elements, certain uh, uh, characteristics of the task you are related to, certain organizational dynamics, organizational elements that also triggers, that also impacts or influences your creativity. Now, when we look into the dyadic relationship or the team outcome, when we are actually going through the studies that how teams, team compositions or member behaviors, collective affective states, task experiences, they all have or they are all connected to relativity. And this is where I come to the theme of this lecture. Creativity is not a simple concept. There are a lot of factors which I have already mentioned that have a significant impact 
on creativity. So if you see that a person is creative by the innate nature, it is because of his genes that he is creative, it will be a wrong assumption to start with. There are a lot of factors within the organization that actually can bring out, can elicit your creativity and also there are factors within your organization that can actually create or make or generate or evolve as a barrier to your creative potential or to your creative, uh, let's say, measures or attempts. So this is the understanding you should have when it comes to the creativity at workplace. Groups composed of members high in dispositional need for closure were less creative than were groups with low member need for closure. Also teams reporting shared goals, participative decision making, a supportive climate, member socializing and longer organizational tenure of team members also engaged in the creative process to a high degree. Now that said, we do not again undermine the impact of task, task structures, creativity requirements and organizational climate. These factors have an effect on the team creativity when you look into the context centered accounts of workplace creativity. By contrasting different task structures, it was found that allowing team members to tackle an idea generation task individually, I repeat individually, first before engaging in collective ideation, let teams to generate thorough purely group based ideation. So when you are looking into First, before engaging in collective ideation, let teams to generate ideas of higher quality than those generated through purely group-based ideation. So this is the understanding we should have when creativity is dissected as a dyadic or team outcome. Now let's look into creativity as an individual outcome, interactions between actor and the context specifically. Wang and Chen 2010 showed that the positive effects of benevolent leadership on follower creativity in Taiwan depended on the follower considering creativity an important part of role identity. So if you are being recruited onto a creative post, you have a certain level of role identity. You have already uh, made yourself distinct. You have already made yourself identified with respect to the role. And when there is role clarity and when there is role identity, you are performing in a better way in terms of the creativity. So this is the, what Wang and Cheng 2010 actually portrays. The effect of transformational leadership was most positive when both employees identification with their leaders and organizational innovative climate were high. So it depends on organizational innovative climate as well as the employees identification with their leaders. So it's not a cup of tea for those organizations which do not generally provide an innovative climate and it is also not the cup of tea for those employees which or whom they do not identify with their leader. So when identification was low, the effect of transformational leadership was more positive at lower levels of innovative climate. This was what the study found out. Now creativity as a dyadic or team outcome, we, we understand that certain leadership characteristics, certain leadership characteristics and styles are necessary to bring out the positive potential inherent in a team's informational resources which otherwise remain without effect. So you are to be the person who is to make a call on a certain level of creativity to be induced in an organization, you see that the role of leadership is critical. The role of leadership is vital in actually making the organization a critical organization or making the organization a creative organization considering the informational resources at play. Now these are some of the references which I have uh, collated here, which have been linked to uh, you know, the different points in the slides. So when we look into creativity, the attempt was to understand a very talked about phenomena, uh, a phenomena which generally people use, misuse in actually delivering something or actually claiming something. 
So let's understand creativity very well. Creativity is all about idea generation, no doubt about it. But that said, it is not a simple concept. There are certain complex entities, there are certain complex factors that are related to creativity. It, it need not be your only personality characteristics. It need not be that creativity comes from innate structure or it is dependent on your genes, no. There are certain factors within organization and this is the relevance of OBM, this is the relevance of this class in including this in the entire syllabus of OBM. There are certain factors like task uncertainty, task complexity, characteristics of different tasks that you are assigned to, the team dynamics, the way people are behaving, the interpersonal associations, all these aspects, all these elements are vital in eliciting the creativity out of you. So it is not a simple factor, it is a complex factor and that understanding is, should be the takeaway from this particular lecture. Thank you for listening to me patiently, see you in the next class with more insights into creativity, till then take care, bye bye. Mm -hmm.